This program contains adult content. Is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What am I, an idiot? Come on. That yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true. That religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody. It's not human intelligence. If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Friday. Yeah. January. It no, it's not January. No, God, we, God, we, we just said the date. We just said the motherfucking date. February 2nd. And this is episode 192. 192. I'm Dan Ellis, your ginger bearded host guy. Misanthrope Matt. Misanthrope Matt's here. Ryan Duffy <laughs> is also here. <laughs> uh, we want to welcome you all to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We're very excited. We had a great interview with Natalie Newell, uh, director and producer of the Science Moms documentary that I would recommend everybody go and watch because it's fantastic. We've also got a code for you to use to get a big discount on it that you can hear about during our interview and i'll be yeah. sure to post it in the show notes as well because we're not just going to give it to you at the beginning you got to wait for the prize <laughs> you got to work for that shit man it's like you don't just dig to the bottom of the box of cereal and grab the prize out you got to eat through the box do you remember that you remember when cereal had shit in it like oh, little yeah. toys and stuff i would always do they do that anymore i don't know but I don't think they do. I realized after a while they would stop putting it in the actual bag, and it would uh, be on like taped to the bottom of the bag uh, or the bottom of the box. So I just pulled the whole bag out, steal it before my sister can get to it. Oh yeah, my mom used to get pissed off because I I, I perfected yeah. the the method of like squeezing the rectangular box to where it was more circular yeah. at the opening, <laughs> and so then you could shake it so it was horizontal and be able to get the, your hand all the way to the bottom. Find and, it. Yeah. Then she'd get angry because i'd take the toy out before my well sister it was could probably because it. you put your dirty child hands in that was the, probably the re yeah all of mm -hmm. the cereal touching every to bit eat. of cereal in the box yeah. yeah that was probably it too <laughs> maybe um what did you guys do over the last week i've just been chilling with puppy chilling with the puppy yeah. oz oz the great and powerful the great and powerful destroyer of toys and wallets and wallets. <laughs> he ate my wallet last night. Oh. But, he, but he made sure to take the money out, ate the whole insides out, and then just left it there on my bedroom floor. And I walked in my bedroom. I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. I killed it for you, Dad. It smelled like your butt and had your money in it. I, had, I determined that it was time that I took it out. I saved your money, though. <laughs> I'm just glad he didn't eat my any of my ID cards or my debit card oh, yeah. or yes. my driver's license. Or did you say my ass? What? My ass? <laughs> my ass? <laughs> and you, sir? What? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> how does your How does your wallet uh, taste? I don't know. No, what have you been doing like, last Like week? Ryan's ass. <laughs> oh. How do you know what Ryan's ass tastes like? <laughs> yeah. We had a night. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think you were there, actually. Oh, a few months ago, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. Mm, I don't remember that part. <laughs> um, same old man. Same old man. Same old man. That's what you've been doing, the same old man? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ryan. Does she like popsicles? <laughs> Not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for that guy. <laughs> uh, no, there's been some footballs. Haven't yeah. talked about that for a while. Oh, well. The Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday. We don't know. It hasn't been played guess. yet. Well... Has not been played. Sure. What are, what are the odds in Vegas? Do you know? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half points? Mm -hmm. For? The Patriots. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very much, though. They average 3.8 in all their wins, so in all their mm. Super Bowl wins. So. Hmm. Well, I hope it's a good game. I hope it's not a blowout. Like, those are just fucking boring to watch. They've never done that. Yeah. But that would be a game to put some money on for the Eagles. If it's if the game is a blowout, it'll be an Eagles over Patriots blowout. Oh yeah, yeah. Because sometimes they go be... into the, if they go into the game way too cocky, like we got this, that could be a, a detriment to them. If the Patriots win, it'll be close. Yeah. But the Eagles could win in a blowout. 
If it's close, I don't think the Eagles will win. The Patriots are built to play close games and come, you know, come from behind. The Eagles are not. <laughs> mm. Come from behind, old man, wallet smell, ass. That's I was our just, conversation. I noticed on the label of the beers that you brought tonight. Yes, that it says premium Bavaricum. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Bavaricum. I thought. Oh, oh no, okay. I'm just kidding. It's uh, I don't know. I, I'm guessing that's Latin or Roman for the area of Bavaria. Oh, Bavaricum, where the, where the uh, beer originates. Started in 1040. Why in Stefaner? Mm-hmm. I've never, I've never seen this beer before. I'm uh, excited to drink mine later. It was, it was tasty. Yeah, should mm. be. It looks tasty. It's got a fancy bottle, and when, it was opened in when ten ten forty. Yeah, that's when the when the uh, brewery was opened. Hmm. In the year ten forty. Yeah, not ten forty a.m. <laughs> that's a long time ago. Yeah, that's almost a millennia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did? Were you there? Do you know mm-hmm. that it opened in ten forty? Well, they put it on the brick. Uh huh. On the what? No, they put the the cornerstones of a lot of buildings. They put the 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 year the building was made. Uh huh. Like where it was founded. Uh huh. Like old buildings. Uh huh. So they put it on the brick. Uh huh. Yeah. Put it on a brick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Over the last week, I did I have my birthday with no that was that was before that was before yeah Matt I'm, has Matt had his birthday yeah That's right. I'm just confused on what day it is Ryan's mom has a birthday coming up yep tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. She killed Buddy Holly, Big Bopper, and Richie Valens. I remember you mentioning that on yep. one of our episodes a long, was, long time ago. Yep. Yep. She was born the day the music died. Uh huh. Don't, didn't you say that you wait? So how did always she, post that to her wall or something? Yeah. I'll always yeah. say that instead of happy birthday. Like, hey, you know what today is? Today's the day the music died. <laughs> <laughs> bye, I remember you bye, mentioning bye, that like American two or three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, God, what did I do? Oh, all this week I was in training at work, so that was... Fucked. It it was actually a good class. I learned quite a bit during the class and was a really good instructor, Um, but I had to drive to Ogden every day to do it, so a little over 100 miles round trip, and mm. I'm so fucking over that. I'm <laughs> glad that I'll be able to work from home next week, and... Must be nice working from home. I mean, I drive like 600 miles a week. That sucks. <laughs> that fucking sucks, dude. Why do you drive that much? Well, it's like 300 just going to work and back. Round trip is 300 miles? Close to. What? It's like 260 something, 270. Huh. Round trip for work. Coming here to the podcast oh, for yeah. one of my trips to Salt Lake a week. Yeah. <laughs> that's a 100 miles round trip. Yeah. And I usually make at least one or two more to Salt Lake, and then that's not including just driving around town, going grocery shopping, going out and doing stuff. That's a lot of miles. It is. That's why I got rid of the fucking Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably saving a shit ton on gas. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the uh I wonder what the two skeptical chaps think of your uh your insane commute numbers. I don't know. Just given that uh, That's why I've a lot so of podcasts con- condensed in in the UK, I yeah. think. I mean it's... I don't know, maybe Dan, maybe Dr. Dan drives 200 miles for his uh I don't think so. No, I think he's, he's talked job. about he's talked about walking to work <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah. Well, he's a fit fellow. Well, he's not that <laughs> yeah, fit. But a, <laughs> fit, a, a fit fellow could walk to my work. There's people that do 150 mile marathons. Oh yeah, I could walk to work. There's no fucking way I would do it because it would take me a really long time. <laughs> You'd to work do it. Yeah. one day a year. <laughs> <laughs> you guys better really appreciate it that I'm here today. Yeah, you, you walk in, it's July, you're like, well, I better get going home before the snow hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, walking 50 miles one way. Well, 100 miles round trip, that would, I, I, I would just be walking the whole time. I wouldn't be able to get anything done. But yeah, we had a great time talking to Natalie. We're, we're going to take you over to the interview now because okay. why wait? It's fucking awesome and yeah. she's a badass. So let's do that. Here you go. This is Sarah Ponte Rivera with the Satanic Temple's Gray Faction. You can learn more about Gray Faction at grayfaction.org or find us on our social media account on Twitter and Facebook. And you are listening to the Godless Revolution. What? 
spooky doctum, I shall fill the vaccines with autisms! Because reasons! Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. All right, on the line, we have Natalie Newell. For those of you who don't know, Natalie Newell is the director and producer of Science Moms, as well as one of the hosts of the Science Enthusiast podcast. Natalie holds an M.E.D. and worked for a decade in the field of Montessori education before choosing to become a stay-at-home parent and pursue her interests in science and secular activism. How are you, Natalie? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to talk to you guys tonight. We're very excited to talk to you as well. This is awesome. I have been a big advocate for GMOs and vaccines and all that good kind of stuff that seemed to be a little controversial for some people these days. And I'm I'm glad (laughs) that we have some, some really good media products that are coming out that can help that we can point people to as a reference. For a long time, there was the lone voice of the organic industry or the anti vaxxers who were out there pushing fear into the hearts of every mom and father out there who wanted to take good care of their children. So I was really excited to see your Science Moms documentary out on the market. Well, thank you. And yes, I I think that this movie is sort of a response to all of that fear-based marketing and that fear-based narrative that unfortunately has surrounded issues of parenting and just general food and health issues. Like you said, some of the movies out there that have saturated the market on these topics are things like Vaxxed or GMO OMG, because that's such a catchy name. (laughs) And, and what the health, which I watched and was, um, like angry texting my friend, Miles Power from League of Nerds, like the entire time, just what have I gotten myself into? Because there's, a lot of crazy misinformed stuff out there when it comes to things like food and medicine. And so, yeah, I, I hope that what I put out there with obviously, I mean, the voices of these brilliant women that were in the film, I hope that it's something to counter that narrative that's been out there for so long. Yeah, I hope so too. And I think that we're finally starting to see the tide turning on a lot of that. And and I really enjoyed the movie. I watched it just the other day. Uh, before we talk more about the movie, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. Um, so I I guess like where do I start? I'm I'm a mom, obviously, from you know like you said, and that definitely informed some of what I wanted to pursue when it came to the science communication and you know activisty stuff here. Um, my background is. In education, I worked as a teacher and then I was a school principal for five years at a little private Montessori school. And my time there also definitely informed my desire to, I don't know, try to debunk some of the myths and relieve parents of some of the fears that, you know, that come up a lot. I, I dealt with parents of young children all the time in my career and And as somebody who was also interested in, you know, kind of skepticism and critical thinking, sometimes those, those conversations were tricky for me when, when parents (laughs) would come to me and, and ask if their children really needed to be vaccinated to go to the school. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so tricky thing when you are an extremely pro vaccine person, running a school in the state of Maryland where people can sign religious exemptions for vaccines. You have to just take it. Just suck it up and say, well, I I guess it's okay that your kid may infect uh, a bunch of other students. It, it was really hard sometimes really hard is because yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, this is Matt. I was just, I'm I'm just curious about that. The exemption because is, is there something specific um, are, are there certain religions that have pushed for that, that have, that have an, uh, that are opposed to vaccines or is it, is there something about Maryland or that there's this blanket 
exemption if it's just something you believe really hard? So, so that's where I'm, I'm still slightly confused on the idea of religious exemptions because it's not just the state of Maryland. There are other states that have mm-hmm. this option. There were, there were, and I don't know if there still are states that used to have something called a, I think it was called personal belief exemption, which it does, it, it's not religion. It's just basically, I don't like this. I, I don't like this so therefore right. I'm signing whatever. But I've, you know, not that, not that Google search is, uh, is true research, but I, like when I've Googled religions that don't believe in vaccines, I have a really hard time coming up with religions that mm-hmm. don't believe in vaccines. I was, I was going to say, do, uh, the only one I could think of off the top of my head was possibly Jehovah's Witness and Christian scientists. Yes. Mm-hmm. Those, those are the only two that I have been able to think of or find any, um, and I, and again, I could be wrong. So your listeners can tell me that I'm wrong, but those are the only two that I've come across that are like maybes. And I, I don't think that the certain families that I'm thinking of from my experience at the school were either Jehovah's Witnesses or Christian scientists. Mm-hmm. Um, and they signed, you know, religious exemption. But so is that the tricky thing of, you know, you can't question somebody's stated religious belief, right? Yeah, like how so, hard do you really yeah. believe this? Yeah. Right. So, which, which verse did Jesus talk about vaccines? Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Jesus predicted that one day we would be able to rid the world of measles, but <laughs> yeah. then they but then they would come back because yeah. be like yeah, I, I right. still <laughs> I still can't wrap my head around the fact that that people would choose to bring back diseases that can be eradicated because of medicine. But mm-hmm. humans are... Um, Stupid. Yeah, let's, let's go with that <laughs> for right now. Um, but, can't, but, but hopefully their minds can be changed, or some of them can be. But yeah, so my time working in, in a school with families and their young children and all of the fears and stuff that goes along with raising kids, It all just kind of came together one night um, while I was up really late feeding my own young child at, you know, two in the morning and scrolling through my phone because, you know, you need something to do while you're feeding (laughs) a baby at at an an hour that, you know, nobody should really be awake um, unless you're doing something really fun. So... (laughs) And, and yeah, sorry um, to Zeke, who is now sleeping soundly upstairs. Um, it wasn't fun feeding him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great hours. Um, but I, so, you know, I'm, I'm working in this job and, and seeing all this stuff around me from other parents. And I stumbled upon, um, there's a, a parenting blog called Grounded Parents. Um, I think it's part of like the skeptic network of blogs or whatever. It was one of the one of the very few parenting type of websites I ever visited because I just I just couldn't with a lot of the kind of mommy blog type of culture. <laughs> it it ne- it just never resonated with me. So I I kind of sometimes felt like I was on this weird parenting island of not being scared of everything, but maybe that's bad because I should be scared of stuff. It you know, you come up with these convoluted sort of ideas in your own head. But I came across this group of women who were just out there pro GMO saying, Hey, Gwyneth Paltrow, you don't speak for moms everywhere with your just label it stuff. And yeah, just putting it out there, this different narrative about food and about parenting and then I made a movie about them. <laughs> <laughs> so had you had you previously been non-supportive of GMOs? Because I ask because there was a period of time when I don't know, I it was something that I didn't really think about a whole lot, and I saw a bunch of my atheist and skeptic so-called friends, or not or so-called skeptics. Not that they're so-called friends, but but posting uncritically things, you know, pictures of people injecting a tomato with a syringe and saying that we're creating Franken food and the GMOs cause autism and cancer and, you know, any, you name it, any kind of malady that they could possibly want to tie to it at all. And there was a brief period of time there when I myself was just like, 
oh, well, this is scary. I should let everybody know. And I would share the same thing. And then I can't remember what got me actually looking into a little bit, got me looking into it a little bit more. Maybe I just thought, hey, I don't know much about this and I should look into it. But once I started doing some basic research into the safety and e efficacy and the technology that's in use and, you know, traditional growing methods, all, all of this stuff around farming techniques and genetic engineering. And I, I realized and found out that no, this stuff is perfectly safe. In fact, it's probably more safe than a lot of the other traditional or organic things that are on the market through Joe Schmo at the farmer's market. It doesn't have to yeah. go through nearly as much regulation or anything. And so. Since that time, I felt really bad that I had, you know, shared, you know, two or three memes. And so I've been very passionate about being pro GMO, pro vaccines, all of that kind of stuff. Was there a time when you were also where, where you didn't really know either way or? Yeah, I, I definitely never put myself into that sort of anti camp of, you know, of ideas about it, but I, th for, a lot of time, I didn't really give it that much thought. Um, be and then for a while, I think the only association I had when I when people would say GMO, they'd say Monsanto, mm -hmm. and then assign Monsanto's bad. It's a bad corporation. Monsanto. Monsanto, who uh, who pays all my bills. <laughs> you they, shill. Yeah. You rolling in the I, show I bucks. Am. I mean, the the conspiracy theories around science moms and Monsanto are. They, they just, they delight me because they're so <laughs> outlandish and ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I was going to ask why they didn't get a producer's credit in the uh, film. Right. Oh, I've had people on Twitter literally go through my Kickstarter backers. Oh, my God. And, they, and they've called out, um, shout out to Cami Ryan and Janice, um, person who donated to, like 50 bucks each to my Kickstarter. That's somehow a, they're a front for Monsanto. They work. They work for Monsanto. <laughs> all fifty bucks. All, like all, all fifty bucks. So um, yeah. So they could yeah. funnel that dark money to your project. <laughs> yeah, that that paid for what a few miles of me flying on an airplane. Yeah, it. Yeah. So so Monsanto just that that evil you know Mordor type of place that that funded the film. Um, yeah. So that was my only association uh, with. As far as GMOs, you know, back, you know, pre-science moms, probably pre-kids and everything too. Um, but, but yeah, I think though I, I fell into the trap before I had kids when I first, you know, when I first had my, my son Milo, um, just thinking, do I need to feed them organic food? Because that's somehow better. Right. Because there's that that sanctity that goes along with words like organic mm -hmm. and natural. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, if anything, that's probably what I bought into a little bit. The idea of wanting that, you know, imagining that that organic sweet potato was just harvested from, you know, some little farm up the road. <laughs> and I'm, you know, pureeing it for my little baby. Yeah, no, um, by, by child number two. No, that was not <laughs> even in my mind anymore. But yeah, I think that I had a little bit of that. I assigned some kind of extra meaning to, you know, to shopping at Whole Foods, maybe, which I haven't stepped foot in a Whole Foods in a really long time. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I had a little bit of that. The vaccine stuff, I I was always just on board with finding, you know, pediatricians who just who I trust. I remember going to, oh, cause you can go and meet the pediatricians before you have a baby, just, I guess, to see if, you know, they're a good fit for you. I went to a meeting at the pediatrician's office for new parents and the doctor who gave the little spiel about their um, practice said, we vaccinate here. So, and we advocate for vaccinating. So if you're not going to go down that road, we suggest you find another practice and yeah, if you're not going to go so, down that road, we suggest yeah, you hit the road. Pre pretty much. And I was so down with that message that, I mean, that's still where my, my kids go to the doctor um, because they are super just, of course they should be. They're pediatricians. They should be. But I guess there are probably some that aren't. Aren't as, focused on the health. Yeah. So um, I so I was always very pro-vaccine and my mom is a nurse and she probably would have like, 
given me an earful. If I was like, mom, I don't want to vaccinate. I, mm. I wouldn't have heard the end of it. So I, I don't want my mom to get mad at me either. <laughs> but what, a, what about what Jenny McCarthy thinks of you? Yeah. My God, <laughs> I, Jenny McCarthy and Andrew Wakefield. And I, I still, I can't believe that somehow Jenny McCarthy became the voice of <laughs> anything. Yeah. Of, yeah. of, of anything. <laughs> and, and yeah, the, the anti-vax craze that between her and, um, and a, Dude who's not even really a doctor anymore. Mm -hmm. Andy Wakefield, just super unfortunate. But yeah, I never, I never fell into that, um, into that even questioning. And I had people ask me when I had my children, are you vaccinating? You should watch this movie. Too many, uh, too soon. All the buzzy stuff that uh, people yeah. say about it. Um, and that I just, I, it was just a hard no from me. I mean, there's there's weird stuff that people say to you when you have kids like they're giving advice based on their experience and some of it is is fucking crazy. Like yeah. I had I had one mom who was a parent at the school like when I was working at the school so she's essentially my my client in a sense like I I need to be polite when um she told me I should take my baby to a chiropractor. Oh. <laughs> So there were there were a lot of those awkward sort of moments where, you know, a woman is telling me that my six month old, he's, he's a baby. So he's crying because guess what? Babies cry. But she told me it would be better if I took him to a chiropractor. That his crying would be better. Maybe yeah, he... because cause maybe he has because maybe he has colic and the chiropractor uh. fix it. I'm not kidding. Like, because she uh. said her kids go to the chiropractor. And I'm just standing there in fucking disbelief. And it was one of those, all right, have a good day. I wasn't going anywhere, but now I am because I need to end this conversation. Yeah, see, I would have recommended Reiki way before chiropractic. Right, right. You go with go with that magic touch <laughs> yeah. before you're cracking anybody's yeah, back. No twist mean, yeah, no twisting. Twisting the babies yeah. isn't good. No, no, that it's not good. But let's let's <laughs> heal them. <laughs> Some other way, yeah. Crystals and Reiki before chiropractic, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you have to, you have to go. It's different steps, but yeah, she she took it to eleven right away and was just go go to the chiropractor. Yeah. So yeah. my my life pre science moms was kind of just listening and taking in a lot of this stuff. And now, man, if somebody told me to take my my child to a chiropractor now, it would probably be a little bit of a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because, I mean, I knew it was bad then because that just seemed really strange. Yeah. But now I, yeah, it would be hard to be as polite, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, so what was the genesis for Science Moms? What made you decide, hey, I'm going to make a fucking movie? Yeah. Um, I mean, and that's, and that's kind of what it was in a sense was I'm going to make a fucking movie. But, um, <laughs> but no, it was I'm going to make a fucking movie, but it's going to take a village to make this movie because what do I know about any of this? Um, it was pretty much reading that, that open letter to celebrities, these pro GMO moms. Um, and me just thinking that, that like just having the idea that that's, that that's a parenting narrative that needs to be told. And the first step was, was simple and just contacting the five women that ended up being in the film and saying, Hey, I'm a stranger on the internet. <laughs> would you be interested if I was able to make this happen? Would you be interested in being interviewed for a documentary? And they didn't think I was crazy. So they were. Um, and I, so I'm fortunate enough to like have my best friend who is a, a filmmaker and film professor who I was able to just start, you know, spitballing ideas with. My kid's dad is a film and TV editor. He works for National Geographic. He's a fantastic, you know, editor. And so he edited the film. Um, th like the combination of people that I know from, from college, from, you know, the DC area were able to, you know, come together and, you know, I was able to easily hire directors of photography, um, hired people in each city. Like I just, it was kind of a fake it till you make it thing too, honestly, <laughs> making this film because 
I learned as I went and, and how, and the interviews when I did them, I went in with, you know, questions I wanted to ask these women. But the nice thing is that it really just turned into us having conversations Mm -hmm. and they all welcomed me and, you know, some dude with a camera (laughs) into their (laughs) home and, and we had these really interesting conversations and, you know, and hopefully that comes across in the film, but it was this thing of, I want to make a fucking movie and, and I did, but you know, it's through the work of so many people that it happened and not just the people that worked on it and the women that were in it, but the thing that, that really still like makes me think, holy shit, this is amazing is how much support this has had on social media within kind of the, the science communication type of community, skeptics, um, atheists and secular community, the agriculture type of community too. And because we, you know, we love farmers and what they do. Um, and that, I mean, that's another big part of how this happened because the film wouldn't be able to exist without the like Kickstarter campaign. Like, no, it wasn't Monsanto. It was a crowdfunding <laughs> campaign um, that made it happen. So I think that this, the project for me um, is a testament to the fact that people want this kind of information out there. Parents want, want something that isn't, you know, Jessica Alba and the honest company telling them that they need to buy these expensive diapers because they're going to be whatever better for their children. It, it doesn't need to be that around parenting. It doesn't need to be Gwyneth Paltrow standing in Washington, DC saying like, I'm here as a mom label GMOs because they're bad. It, there's a different story to tell and people want to hear it. And so I think that, that, yeah, it, it started with, I want to make a movie and the process in, through that process, realizing that there are people that want to see this movie. This is Shalise Blythe with the Satanic Temple and the National Director of the After School Satan Club. For more information on how you can start a club in your area, visit afterschoolsatan.com. You are listening to The Godless Revolution. Oh, a mother? How did ye know? A mother always know. A woman on Tebow tells me, and she know first she too is mother? I will do never back see me, Babel! Curses! Foiled again! You willn't get away with this? Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. Yeah, one of the things, well, a couple of things that I really love about the film is that it's not heavy handed. You know, it, it's not heavy handed and it isn't some person in a lab coat just spouting facts at you. What I really liked is the emotional connection that you got out of, uh, out of the moms that were on the film, basically saying, you know, I, I'm a parent also. I had the same concerns that a lot of the anti GMO and anti vax parents have. And I get that the, that the people who are anti GMO or anti vaccine, that they're, you know, they're motivated by fear and for care of their children, but they also don't seem to understand how critical thinking works and how to, how to best research, how to get the best answers in order to, in order to care for their children the way that they want. And I think a lot of it is really, uh, driven by emotion and fear. And I've noticed that with people in that crowd, a lot of the time you cannot just tell them facts because facts are something foreign to them. You have to make an emotional appeal and connection with them. And that's something that I think you did really, really well with the, with the film. Yeah. I mean, I think that, that that's, that that was the goal because I think we see with the, you know, the anti-vax crowd and the pro organic crowd and, and everybody who's, who's trying to push this, you know, tug at the heartstrings type of agenda. Um, they're really successful at it because feelings are compelling and getting to people's hearts and getting to the, you know, whether it's, I mean, it unfortunately kind of goes back to fear, but they do it in sort of a, oh, 
sort of seductive way is that through, you know, through their marketing and all of that, they make people, you know, buy into their messaging. But science and facts, it, it's not always as compelling to the, you know, kind of reaching people's hearts and minds. And so, I, I mean, I think we are fortunate now to have so many really great science communicators out there who are making an effort to connect with people while providing them, you know, facts and actual information. But yeah, I think that the reason kind of the like anti-GMO movement in particular has has had a lot of success is because they've, you know, tried to do that sort of personal connection and make parents really feel like somehow choosing their products or choosing to, you know, eat certain kinds of foods is is making them better parents and therefore having better children. And, and I don't know, I think that we can do both, you know, make, make a connection with people and just, and give them information at the same time. But yeah, to have put all of those women in lab coats and in sort of sterile settings, just giving information. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that, that, that would have, that would have worked too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we see it all the time with people, who get really upset, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the people on the anti side seem to have this idea in their head that, you know, if you want to give your children, if you want to feed your children GMOs or anything biofortified, any, any bit of genetic engineering, if you want to give them, you know, way too many shots way too soon, that you must be an awful parent or you're stupid or you hate your children or you just don't care. And it seems like they, they have this thought in their head that me spending more money for the same item, basically, and having to go way out of my way to make sure that I'm going above and beyond and trying to protect my children, that that somehow makes them a better parent or that people who don't do that aren't as good a parent. And so I think it, it was really great that you were able to show, and I apologize. I can't remember the one woman's name on it who, had attended at, like a march against Monsanto mm -hmm. or whatever. Yep, that was Jenny. Yeah, I was there too, and that was quite a day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and Ryan brought, yeah. Ryan made a good point earlier. He's like, I really wonder what the one woman was talking about when she said, "Oh, I've cured what was a five it's or six different I, I've things." I've cured five illnesses that you can't cure. I'm like, I want to know what those five illnesses are. I know, you can right? It. I yeah, yeah. I I don't know if if we could replicate that study. <laughs> um, yeah, she, she was really adamant about the fact that she did this thing and cured her child with an organic diet. Measles and polio. You haven't seen those in a while, have you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I cured them. <laughs> she cured them. Yeah. The, the world will be cured with organic foods, which, which don't use pesticides. Just kidding. They do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But that, but that's the reality is that I think some people do somehow get themselves to believe that what they're doing worked. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I watching that back though, it's like, that was a bizarre exchange to witness in real life. But I, I feel for some of these parents because imagine the amount of stress you go through where you are that like you're that consumed with making these decisions and probably weighing every you know everything that you're buying at the grocery store do I buy like you don't they don't want to buy the conventionally grown thing they're probably checking labels to see if it's you know gmo free whatever and i just feel like that level of parental stress mm. that can't be good for anybody like, I guess I, I wish that some people, some parents who are kind of on the fence about these issues, maybe will will stumble upon this movie sometime and, you know, just rethink some of their fears. Because I think that, you know, it's unfortunate if people are just making decisions based on, you know, memes they've seen on Facebook or the conversations that happen, you know, among moms trying to kind of one up each other on who, you know, who's who, had the, less, the least amount of GMOs injected in their yeah, child. Yeah, 
and and honestly, like these are conversations that to some degree do occur. I mean, I've had, I was telling, I think when I um, talked to Kara Santa Maria for her podcast, I think I was, I think I told her that I once had a mom tell me that she had a goldfish free household, like that the crackers weren't allowed at goldfish. Oh, crackers. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty easy to yeah. do, isn't it? You just don't buy yeah. a goldfish. You just but, don't yeah. buy a goldfish, but no, like, you don't buy the crackers either. And she wanted the school I worked at to be goldfish free too. <laughs> Guys, this Why? is life. Why? Because they're bad. Oh, I guess. Yeah. No, this is, this is my life. This was, or was <laughs> my life. Crackers don't grow into fish shapes. But may, maybe these are Frankenfish. You never know. You never know. But huh. she should have been like, we can get rid of the, the goldfish, but we cannot get rid of the animal crackers. The kids will kill us. <laughs> yeah, and I like the free range no. organic square crackers <laughs> that are grown farm fresh just down hand, the road. And woven triskets, yeah. woven by artisans <laughs> unless, in a barn in the Midwest. That's um, it. Unless you get the Pepperidge Farms sea caught goldfish. <laughs> Yeah, then. like, but sustainable. So, sustainable. Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we don't want to, you know, kill the planet. But yeah, can you imagine though, being a parent and being this worried that you go into a school, and this is a thing you feel like you need to talk about? Like it, it's it's yeah, funny. To, it's funny to me because it's just it's kind of funny to just say, oh, this mom wants a goldfish free school, um, but. Can't like I just can't imagine living with that level of I I don't even I don't know how to define it. Well, but, it's like hashtag first world problems, right? I mean, yeah, like this is it, the biggest issue that they feel they need to bring to the attention of the principal of their children's yeah. school. There's something yeah. neurotic about that particular there example. Is. There is, and so that you know, that's an isolated incident in that you know nobody else ever wanted me to ban goldfish, but <laughs> but I. But I had people who, multiple people who requested that we as a school request that parents only send in organic foods if, you know, the kids are going to eat a group snack or something. And I said, no, because my goodness, parents are already paying for their children to come to a private preschool. I, I, I'm not going to ask them to pay extra money for food that isn't healthier because yeah. it's organic like but these are absolutely first world problems and so mm -hmm. to have experienced that and then the more i got into the process of making the film and just learning more about biotechnology and all of that you know the positive impact it could have when i when i learned about things like you know like golden rice for instance mm -hmm. or um have you guys seen food evolution yeah, I watched that last week. That's excellent. Isn't that such a rad movie? Yeah. So, so you you think about that movie and how biotech helped save the Hawaiian papaya or what they're doing with banana crops in Uganda. Like we we forget our privilege here. And so when when parents are coming to me talking about organic foods or non-GMO foods or whatever, we it's easy to just go to the grocery store and you have you can choose anything you want right mm -hmm. for the most part here but by doing this whole you know gmos are bad biotechnology is bad we're demonizing technology that could have you know it's not the panacea that's going to save you know save the world and end world hunger but it can help absolutely yeah. and yeah. yeah and we're also so that, creating a huge amount of confusion about what is science? What does evolution mean? What is genetically modified? What's organic? Mean? All, all those terms are so muddy now that nobody yeah. knows what the hell they're talking about with any of that stuff. I mean. Yeah. And it, and it's weird that here we are in 2018 and we're, I feel like we should be in a way celebrating the fact that we have technology that could, you know, help with food crops in, right. in places or, you know, talking to, um, to like Kevin Fulta, who's, you know, fantastic biotech guy who, mm -hmm. when I, when I talked to him for the podcast, talking about citrus greening, that this, you know, can be harming the fact that we have 
or, you know, we have orange crops that are getting harmed by citrus greening and well yeah it's people- like 50 percent of the citrus crops in the u.s yeah. are now gone right yeah and so could biotechnology help that hopefully but when you have people that are trying to stand in the way of you know that technology helping it just it seems counterproductive to me <laughs> shouldn't we be embracing um the fact that it can Po- like make positive impact but there seems to be this fear of is it just is it fear of science like what it what is it the irony is that they're gonna they're gonna ruin everything so that all we have left are goldfish <laughs> <laughs> we're we only eating goldfish the united states is is being sustained on, on goldfish that's it and that mom is going to lose her mind yeah, yeah. Your government issued ration of goldfish. <laughs> it's goldfish. I think you mean government fishued. <laughs> it's your government fishue. I mean, no one else can say anything better than that for this conversation. Oh, <laughs> uh, we are the worst at puns, but I'll scale it back for now. <laughs> well, I'm I start I'm starting a new podcast with my friend Chad. Um, he's a pediatrician, and I, you you said puns, so it made me think of it. It's um parenthetical science like with emphasis on the parent yeah (laughs) very cool yeah so you know a pediatrician who happens to be a dad and i'm a mom and whatever else it is that i'm doing so yeah we're (laughs) doing a new show super clever nice (laughs) because you know i i mean the world probably doesn't need more podcasts but um (laughs) we figure you know bring a little of the skeptical parenting out there well podcasts (laughs) like that we need more of yeah, absolutely. We could use less of uh, less some goop. other kinds. Yeah, less goop. <laughs> yeah, the world could use a lot less goop because um, <laughs> the world doesn't need coffee enemas or <laughs> date eggs. Yeah, <sighs> or vaginal steaming. No, uh. we no, we don't need any of that. I think she also did some kind of bee stinging therapy, Gwyneth. What? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I I don't I don't know what that's for. I don't want to know what that's for. Why here's um, one out of ten bee allergies. Why would you want to sting bees? <laughs> the other nine are dead. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is about bee stings that are good for your health. But I, again, I she was selling a one hundred twenty five dollar coffee enema device on her uh, website. So I. So I don't know. Hmm. It's weird. It's weird out there, and <laughs> and people buy into it though. Yeah. People pay mm-hmm. money to go to like these kind of quacky conferences and stuff. Um, I, I mean, the reason I, I've never actually met him in real life, my new podcast co-host, but <laughs> we met over social media and um, my friends, uh, James and Miles from the League of Nerds podcast, we, uh, we crowdfunded money to send Chad to this woo conference in Florida where like Andrew Wakefield talked. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah. And, um, this, and we recorded a podcast episode about this whole experience that Chad had, but the, I mean, people are going and listening and taking advice from people who are telling them like, you know, don't, don't use real cancer treatments. Like this, we live in a really fucked up world. Yeah. It's so weird. It's harmful. It is. It is harmful. And that's why, um, you know, I mean, some of it is just crazy harmful like i can't even imagine but then some of it is just this mass spread of misinformation and i feel like it's it's up to you know any of us to do our part to kind of combat that spread of misinformation so whether it's podcasts or movies or thinking before you share things on social media (laughs) <laughs> Good luck it's, with that one. <laughs> I know, right? But you know, you know what was really encouraging though recently is all the people that went off on Stonyfield organic yogurt. Oh, about, that was awesome! Yeah, that was so rad. And then everybody get got banned from the Facebook from Stonyfield's <laughs> Facebook page. I yeah, like I mean, it's just a regular day for me getting banned from yogurt page. <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners who may not know, give us give us a brief overview of what happened there so there was a um an advertisement video that stonyfield put out on facebook um that featured children and 
the title of the ad was water, like it was pretty much water GMOs. And the first kid comes on and the first thing you hear is that sounds monstrous. Well, <laughs> it was it, the, my level of cringe was so bad. I, I mean, I wanted to throw my phone across the room. Um, and yeah, then another one comes on and she's like, you t- it's when you put a fish gene in a tomato and the final kid and, and it's all they're all girls, which really bums me out because you have all of these young girls spewing bullshit. And that it's just the cringe factor for me is pretty major. Um, but the one the final one is pretty much saying we we need to know what's in our food. So we're informed or something. And I'm thinking. Jesus Christ, this is the worst ad I've like ever seen. Um, <laughs> so I wrote a blog post about it on the Science Bombs website and shared that a bit. <laughs> and, um, it might have given them a little more attention than they were looking for. <laughs> it's quite possible <laughs> that, that, that that happened. Um, and then tons of people went to um, the Stonyfield Facebook page and were just, you know, giving them science in the comment sections, which was, it was so heartwarming to see that much science (laughs) drop in comment sections on the internet. And then everybody got banned. I went back to comment on something and then I realized I couldn't comment and I couldn't engage at all. And I mean, I did, I did also granted I posted my blog post on Stonyfield's page, but whatever that maybe I didn't like that. (laughs) Um, But yeah. Who gets banned from a yogurt page? <laughs> well, hundreds, hundreds of people at this point have. Um, but this ad was so, it was awful. It was, it was just so science illiterate. And the fact that they used kids in it yeah. made it kind of extra because there, you know, we know that there's ton, there's tons of bullshitty advertising and marketing out there, but I think that the the kid factor just upped the the ridiculousness of it, and yeah, and so then they the yogurt just banned people, and I don't know. It's it was a it's a bummer to see companies that just don't get it, or do they get it? And this is just part of their strategy. It's a ridiculous strategy, and they need to fire their social media team. Um, <laughs> but. But it was really cool to see people just not back down with saying, this is bullshit. So, so to see that, it does show how many, it shows that there's a, a body of consumers out there who don't want it, who don't want to take this yeah. anymore. Yeah. And, who aren't going to buy into superstition and woo and nonsense. Yeah. yeah. And I get it. Like I get that companies, they want, their job is to make money and sell their product. And, and I remember I called, um, I called a company once. I think it might have been Nestle or something like that when they announced some kind of, you know, move to non GMO ingredients or something. And when I talked to a representative on the phone, they said, you know, we, we have to, like, we have to listen to consumers. And most of the consumers that we hear from, are the people on the like anti side? Are ignorant shitbags? <laughs> yeah, because they're loud. They're the loud ones. Yeah. And so, you know, there there could be a very large group of people who who do understand the science, or that or that typically don't really engage in this kind of stuff, but don't necessarily think that say biotech is a bad thing. But these aren't the people that are making any noise. But I but what was cool to see with this yogurt fiasco is that there are people that are willing to to speak up as consumers. And so maybe maybe people can take a take this as a thing of like maybe this is a thing that we could do and tell companies, you know, we were literate with science. <laughs> <laughs> don't pander to us and and so I don't know, it was but it was um kind of entertaining and yeah i just i i had to I had to write a blog post about it because <laughs> yeah. it was because it was just that ridiculous so yeah um yeah i recently read I- a 
article from Mark Brazo where he was talking about uh, the tide turning against the people who are anti-biotech and anti-vaccines and everything, and that more and more people are becoming more educated about this and realize that it's not an issue or that, you know, GMOs are safe, vaccines are safe. In fact, they're very good. They could offer a whole lot of benefit. We need to stop tearing down the scientists who are working on this. And I posted a, I created a poll on Facebook yesterday in my local atheist group, uh, just gauging people's interest or, or things that they've changed their mind on since, I don't know, like, like major things that they've changed their mind on aside from the question of whether or not, uh, invisible sky wizard exists, you know, what <laughs> yeah. else have you, what else have you changed your mind on that you think is important? And there was a, you know, I, I think I initially I created eight or nine different things as there was GMOs, uh, you know, things like alien abduction, vaccines, uh, being anti LGBTQ, yeah. you know, the, a long list of things. And I was really encouraged to see that the number one thing that the 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 item at the top of the list was people had changed their minds on GMOs and biotech. That's awesome. Yeah, so, I was really so, excited about yeah. it. Yeah. That's really cool. So maybe maybe the tide is going to turn. I sure hope so and it seems like it is and I think that movies like Food Evolution and Science Moms are are going to be endlessly helpful in accomplishing that goal of Offering some other form of media and education for people who otherwise would be left to watch things like Too Many Too Soon and, oh, God. you know, all, all of the other anti-GMO, anti-vaccine crap that's out there. So I appreciate everything you're doing uh, to help combat those issues. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, it's been, it's been a really fun journey doing all of this and. And yeah, I'm just really stoked to be part of just this vast group of, you know, really diverse, unique people who are, who all have common goals with this stuff. So, so yeah, it's, and it's always fun to just talk to people like you guys who, who get it and, and are doing, and you know, and are doing, we try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so no, I'm, I'm really glad I got to come on and talk to you guys. No, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I know we've kept you. A little longer. A little, a little longer than you said you had time available oh, no, to us. Fun. So. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. If people want to know more, uh, yeah. where can they go to find out more about Science Moms or you and, and where, how can where they, they find you? the film? Yeah. Okay. So the film, just go to, um, sciencemomsdoc.com and there's all the information about the film. You can download it from there. And, um, you know what? I'm going to just give a, a promo code for the film um, for anybody who's listening now uh, oh. because I, I haven't let it expire yet. If you <laughs> use the promo code Stonyfield in honor of the yogurt, um, <laughs> nice. you, get the, you can get the film for $1.99 oh, <laughs> instead nice. of $4.99. How <laughs> dare you? I know. I know. I, mean, I, I had to. I had to just, you know, I was inspired. I was inspired uh -huh. by Stonyfield. So, yeah. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, and I'm on Twitter at NC Newell and, uh, and I encourage anybody to check out parenthetical science.com for, uh, mm -hmm. the new podcast I'm doing with my friend, Dr. Chad Hayes. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, I look forward to listening to it. I couldn't help but notice, uh, that the word Monsanto has two N's in it. Natalie Newell internet conspiracy go. <laughs> I know you. I mean, I always envision that the GIF of Charlie Kelly from "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" with his conspiracy, like conspiracy theory um, bulletin board, and I, I've definitely tweeted that at a few of um, my favorite conspiracy theorists on Twitter. Paul Thacker, nice. you know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, once again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll have to have you back on here after you've got your, your new show up and going. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited for that one. Yeah. I just, we just had a new, uh, a new baby boy. So I'll be interested in listening oh, to you. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will provide you some relevant content. For awesome. Excellent. Yes. Only goldfish. <laughs> only goldfish. Goldfish only. We're sponsored by goldfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Natalie Newell of Science Moms. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you guys. She was pretty cool. Yeah, she's, she's very super cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, she has a nice, uh, nice voice for podcasting too. 
She does. I was. I kept thinking the whole time she was speaking that she sounded a lot like a vet. Cy Babe. Oh yeah, yeah. There's There's a similarity their voices there. seem very similar. It's just because it was also awesome. Two sciencey yes. women. Man, fit in I'm my sure box. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm sure that's what it was. Uh, no, I think the movie was awesome. I was really excited to see something else out on the market besides just this horrible dreck that we get from all of the people on the anti side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is just. So ignorant, so ill-informed, so anti-science, anti-critical thinking. It's really depressing when I look at the laundry list of all of the shit that's out there from these ignorant turds. Well, it's <laughs> it's like they even mentioned it in the documentary talking about the fact that the money that's probably involved with this because they get high-level uh, celebrities to push this narrative with them so people see, oh, hey – that person's rich and famous and doing really good and wealthy. Well, maybe the reason why they're so healthy and doing so well and, you know, they can't be lying to me and, I don't know, just bullshit believing people because they're a fucking celebrity and they idolize them. Yeah, celebrities can do a lot of good because they have huge platforms and a really large audience and they could do so much to help and benefit people. And I'm sure that that's what they think they're doing, but they should really take some time to be informed about yeah. what the fuck they're talking about. Before they go and tell people that they should put rocks in their vaginas or eat yeah. slop or that, you know. I mean, nobody they, went on a tiger blood rampage to try to find it and drink it after Charlie Sheen was promoting the shit out of tiger blood. <laughs> That's the snow cone flavoring, right? That's yeah. what you're talking about? Sure it is. Tiger's blood. It's the best one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Hi, this is James Hubert, author of Kissing Hex Ass, and you're listening to The Godless Revolution. I should have known we couldn't fool mothers. You? Yes! And once Pepple give to Babel the vaccine for Biggie Smallpox, everyone will have the autismus, and we will rule the world! Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. Oh. Matt brought some stuff to talk about, I believe. Yes, I did. Okay, what it is it? What it is it? What it is it? <laughs> uh, well. What it is it, Matt? I want to know what it is. It's been kind of a weird and intense uh, year. Mm, yeah. Not this one so far. Well, that too, but the last one. And, and, and. You know what? I, I, I still, I could not believe like in 2016 when everyone was like, oh, worst year ever. And I'm like, <laughs> we already know who the president's going to be next year. Yeah. You guys are totally wearing out your this year sucks bullshit. Keep the complaining to a minimum yeah, until next year, people. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought some totally not sh typical show related stuff. Mm. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but I figured you guys could help help the world. A little bit. Ooh. We can. Mm, maybe you can try. Does it involve? Wouldn't hurt drinking? you to try, Dan. Does it involve drinking beer? Sure. Well, does it, does oh, it, okay. Does it need a good mustache? I thought for sure you were going to say no, and I was going to say I wasn't interested. But <laughs> now you've piqued my interest. Yeah. I can help the world and drink beer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I Fuck I've man. brought you some internet questions that need answering. Oh, well then, let us commence to the answers, shall we? Sure. Is this from Yahoo? Some. Some is from Twitter. Yahoo. I can't do that. I used Yahoo. to be able to. <laughs> Yahoo! I can't. Yeah. It just it doesn't work. It's broken. Yeah. <laughs> so you, guys wanna, you guys wanna help the world? Sure. What do you got fix for it? it? Question one. If Batman parents was died, then how was he born? It doesn't make <laughs> sense how died parents can have children. Did they think this through? <laughs> well, maybe he didn't think his was question through in <laughs> in words, because if he remembers right, <laughs> Bruce Wayne watched his parents die. I don't. I don't think they have any idea about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Batman's parents are dead. How does that work? Can't have kids if you're dead. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um. Nobody even knows if cows actually exist. Think about it. What? Cows could be like holograms. They use nuclear energy, too, and like milk is like the waste created using nuclear energy. 
And that is why some people are lactose intolerant, like their bodies are smart enough to realize that it is <laughs> nuclear waste. How? Is that... I don't even know how to start. It sounds like, it sounds like somebody has created a conspiracy theory generating <laughs> website somewhere. Or that done you can just... way too much acid. Yeah. So, I mean, something like, then you could just come up with whatever the fuck you want. Like, mm -hmm. well, this, if I think about it or really don't think about it, could tie into so many. How do you know cows are real? How do you, how do I know that you're real, Ryan? You could be a projection or you could be a lizard person in disguise. Or this could all be a computer generated world in our shit fucking powers aquariums with sea lions in them. You mm. could be a brain in a vat. You don't know. You can't tell me that you're not. But I'm not. We could be living in the Matrix. That's but, what deja vu is. Let's you know that there's a glitch in the Matrix. Yeah, but Keanu wasn't always right. <laughs> uh, I think, isn't he like anti-GMO I stuff? don't know. I seem to remember seeing so I'll, I'll have to look into that. All I know is I've, I've heard, of, the stuff I've heard about Keanu Reeves, he seems like a really decent guy. I was going to say, everybody mm. says that he's a really nice guy. I've seen lots of pictures of him hanging out with homeless people, giving them money, just chatting with them, whatever. Uh, but I seem to recall also hearing that he's a little, he, he likes the woo okay. a bit. Hmm. I'll Keon, have to double check that. Keon woo? Because yes. I know he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't own a car. But he owns a motorcycle shop where they refit uh, newer motorcycles that look like a vintage old motorcycle. I thought you said motorcycle. Yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> tube, and you sit on. It's got wheels, and you launch a mortar, and the force of the mortar <laughs> pushes you. <laughs> There's a little destruction behind you, though, <laughs> and a little at your destination. Yeah, but... you got more. I got more. All right. Should I be a goody tissue or a bad girl? <laughs> um. <laughs> Why not both? I never, I never met a good tissue. What? A goody tissue. Oh, I was gonna say, well, how to get? What? Why would you have never met a goody, a good tissue? Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm always sick when I need one. You need to buy new boxes of tissue, not just root around in the garbage for them. Well, yeah, but I mean, still, it's they're never. You don't need them during a good time. People need tissues when they're sick. Uh huh. When when someone's dead. Uh huh. It's they're always they're all bad reason dead. tissues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Help. I can't see myself on Google Earth. I keep walking outside my house with my laptop and still can't see myself. I'm even waving to catch my attention. <laughs> Holy fuck. I hope that was a joke. I really fucking do. <laughs> What does it mean when someone says meow to you? Someone keeps saying meow to me. <laughs> <laughs> They've obviously never seen Super Troopers, which has a second movie coming out. Oh, really? Yeah, the, I saw that they had a full trailer come out for it last week. It's pretty fucking good. Or this person's talking to their cat. <laughs> that could be it, too. But no, but the meow thing yeah. came from Super Troopers. I guarantee that's why people are doing it to him, and he doesn't know it because he hasn't seen the movie. Meow, yeah, sir. Do you know why I pulled you over, right, meow? Oh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> is, he, is he saying meow? I'm going to need to see your driver's license and registration, right, meow? <laughs> <laughs> is dubstep supposed to sound like robot diarrhea? <laughs> Ooh, that is a good question. I like some dubstep. Sure. I, li I like when the beat drops. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Do you like it when it picks back up? Only when, only because I know that later it will drop again. Oh, okay. We like dropping. <laughs> Can I safely look at a picture of the sun? Um, no. Should if be you avoided have to, at all costs. Yeah, if you have to ask that question, you're a fucking moron and can't <laughs> look at any pictures. <laughs> you are disallowed from looking at any pictures ever again. Yeah, don't even look at a picture of yourself, because if you look at a picture of yourself, it's going to be like that weird time loop thing. It's going to be like you touch your own self and you're just going to dissolve into nothing. You'll end up stealing your own soul. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Pretty good answer. <laughs> Can dog eat water, melon? Um, There's a space in between those two. Oh, words. okay. In between water and melon? Um, can they? I, I guess I don't see why they can't. There's no comma after water so that we would know mm. that they're addressing somebody named melon? <laughs> no. Nope. Huh. Can dog eat water, melon? 
if one if they could find one I'll, yeah i'll, I'll bet the dog not. could and... should they that's a whole other question it's if it's just water yeah i don't see why not it's yeah. right in the name yeah. it should be fine yeah uh call him up and say yeah his dog's free to eat water melon perfect and the water seeds are a real pain in the ass though. yeah especially when they come out mm-hmm do cats know when you're masturbating? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's licking its lips, yes. <laughs> well, you just got to quit being so turned on when it shows you it's chocolate starfish, <laughs> and then that wouldn't be an issue now, would it? <laughs> or invite it in. Maybe he likes staring at pussy when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. What's fellatio? My boyfriend wants it for his birthday. Is it a game? They don't have it at Best Buy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest going to Dr. John's. He, he'll know how to remedy the situation. <laughs> <laughs> the, how, how can somebody who knows how to type things into a keyboard... Oh, they don't. <laughs> they don't know they, how to type no. it in. <laughs> I will admit to actually going on Yahoo Answers uh -huh. and typing in the most fucked up questions I can think up of <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> hmm. I, I, I don't know. I just, I've, re I've gotten posts from people or somebody will ask me a question somewhere in a thread, somewhere on social media. And I'm like, do you think this is Google? This isn't Google. This is. Yeah. This is this is a thread we're having a conversation. Like if you have a question about a definition of something, fucking look that shit up on Google. I'm yeah. not mm -hmm. I'm not your teacher. If you have a question for me personally, I'll be happy to answer it. If there's something I said you're that you think is unclear or you'd like more information about, I'd be happy to explain it further. But I'm not going to fucking tell you how to do basic shit like who ties your shoes for you in the yeah. morning to be fair these questions probably only get a blank stare from google <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, ha they have to actually go somewhere else but i actually had a guy come at me once because on uh, one of the facebook groups i was on like uh, someone had asked a question i went on there and said hey here is the state website that you can find the answer on for this and one guy says he asked a question not for the website I'm like, I directed him to a website where you can look up the information. The guy says, yeah, but you shouldn't trust everything on the internet. And I'm like, and you should trust fucking Facebook groups to tell you the fucking answer. Well, yeah, who like, are... I directed him to a .gov site where the state has the laws laid out on what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do in these fucking situations. You should go in there and check it out. He's like, well, I guess that's okay. What a dick bag. That's somebody just <laughs> trying to be a fucking asshole, right? Like, why, why would you even make a shitty comment like that? I'm not here to fucking explain the whole fucking world to you. Yeah. And it, would it be better if I just gave you some random quote from me? Like, well, I say this and that, and that should be the the authority on yeah. it, you know? No, I gave you a good fucking source for accurate information. information. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah. Well, you didn't tell me what you think about it. Well, you didn't ask for that. No, you asked about, like, yes, but a law. Like, hey, is this legal or not legal? Well, here's the fucking state website with all the fucking laws on it. Yeah. I swallowed an ice cube whole, and I haven't pooped it out. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be worried about pooping it out. You should be worried about peeing it out. It's actually water. <laughs> and that's going to fucking hurt when that thing comes out frozen. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're damp and you're peeing out of your dick. <laughs> you mean shitting? Pooping out of your dick. Because I, I hope you're peeing out of your dick. <laughs> yeah. How big is the specific ocean? The specific uh, ocean? I can't specifically tell you. <laughs> You want them to be more Pacific? Is yeah. That what you're uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are there school? Is a point to it? Um, I don't know <laughs> why. Not you're... for you. No. <laughs> no. Um, well, only only if they teach irony classes. <laughs> <laughs> or if your school's a triangle, then it does have a point to it. Mm hmm Yeah. Right at the top. Yep. Yeah. Nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Will my male part get bigger if I let a bee sting me on there? Um. Which you should, I, I don't know. This would be a great experiment. We should we should have you try it out. Well, I'm curious on what what male part is it? Is like his 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 post box that male? <laughs> um, you started out with a p p sound a couple times there. I was wondering where you were gonna go. Oh, I wasn't going with pussy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before doors, how did people go outside? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how they got, got inside, inside before doors. <laughs> well, they built they it built around. it around themselves. Yeah, they needed um. shelter, Dan. 
Yeah, and how do they see outside to know if it's okay I'm to go sorry, outside I'm without dumb, windows? I'm dumb sometimes. I can't. <laughs> Ain't Clitoris that big ass red dog? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My my daughter had a had a oh. favorite stuffed animal, Clitoris oh. the stuffed Clitoris the stuffed dog that she carried everywhere. Clitoris the giant red dog. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit a nose up top. <laughs> Uh, tweet to Pizza Hut. I ordered one large pizza, and when it came, I don't know if it was a joke, but literally nothing on it. Just the crust. No sauce, cheese, toppings, nothing. Pizza Hut, we would like to hear more about this order. Please contact us. My bad, fam. I was high as fuck and opened the pizza upside down. <laughs> 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 I was wondering if the guy ordered it literally and accidentally checked no cheese, no sauce, no <laughs> toppings, and just ordered a crust. But being high is way better. <laughs> what goes around comes back around. Caramel is a bitch. I don't I, get I'm it. Totally, I, I think they misspelled it. karma, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I've never had. Uh, Caramel. I guess if I pronounced and... it like Utah's caramel, then it would have been better. Yeah. Mm. Or I don't know if it was a person named Caramel. Oh, true. That ran around the block and came back and punched his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I hate ungrapefruit bitches. Oh, I hate. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of grapefruit either. I just can't do it. It just it's too bitter. Dude, one of the best drinks in the world is fucking coconut rum and pink grapefruit juice oh I'll, yeah i'll do it in drinks or red grapefruit juice one pink yeah, yeah. the the good stuff yeah yeah but, I can't. yeah coconut juice oh boy that's fucking delicious yeah but i can't crap crack, crack open a grapefruit and just eat out like the people grab the spoons you can't crap it. open a <laughs> no i can't <laughs> i tried they're a little bitter I, yeah that's yeah. i don't like it i remember when i was younger my grandmother was on a some kind of grapefruit diet she would put sugar on it or yeah, salt? Yeah, that kind of defeats yeah. the whole purpose yeah. of eating fruit. I'm like, you're throwing sugar all over the fruit, and you're eating fruit so you don't eat the sugary fucking products. Yeah, yeah. Would it be easier to walk with one leg or three legs? I'm sick of having two legs and was wondering if I should get rid of a leg or add one leg to my body. Well, if you get rid of one, it definitely won't work any better. <laughs> and if you yeah. add one, it'll probably just be necrotic and falling off. I mean, you'd be like a weird fucked up Frankenstein. You'd be much more sturdy though and stable. Like, yeah, you, you could be attacked from almost any yeah. angle, and people wouldn't would but have then a much again, more difficult time pushing you over. We've seen mm -hmm. it in birth defects with people that have multiple limbs, and usually they're all just fucked up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two is the right ratio. You add a third one there, it puts like two of them two all is cockeyed. A, two is a ratio? Uh, better than three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, what is that, 2%? Yeah. Two to two. <laughs> Instead of three to versus two. I don't know. <laughs> two, okay. Yeah. Mm. You heard it here first. <laughs> it's the golden ratio. Yeah. Canadians think the Titanic was a real event and not just a movie. How dumb can you be? Oh, now I have heard about this shit. People thinking that it didn't fucking happen. Really? Oh, yeah. It was just the, that it was just a, just a based movie. on the movie. Or people saying, how dare you ruin the end of the movie? It's like, it's a fucking real life thing. It's like... These are the same people who think vaccines are bad. Yeah. Because I've never met anybody with polio. Why do we need to get any yeah. shots against it? Yeah. It's like ruining Apollo 13. Fuck, I didn't know it was gonna, they're all going to live. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Miss Universe always from Earth? Because um, we haven't found any contestants outside of Earth yet. We keep sending out invitations yeah. and just nobody's RSVPing. Yeah. They haven't sent any hot ones yet. <laughs> they are not they are not responding civil play. Yeah. And the last one, this one I'm really curious how you guys are gonna answer. Oh, okay. Has anyone really been far even as decided to use even to go want to do look more like? I've heard this before, I believe. And yeah. I would say emphatically no. Well, I've heard Barbie. Barbie? Yeah. Is the answer? Yeah. Well. It makes as much sense. It does. Hmm. Cool. This is Phil Ferguson of the cleverly titled The Phil Ferguson Show, and thank God you're listening to The Godless Revolution. 
Tis I, Satan! Are you going to do evil? Even worse, Skiants! Skiants most foul! If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! What else did you bring for us to chew-chew-chew-chat and chew-chew on and chat about and think and talk to the, into the microphones for the peoples about Matt? Oh, me, yeah. Sorry, that went on so long, I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> um, I didn't know what we were doing. I have a story. So okay. A story for you guys. Okay. You're going to love it. I, was, I like stories. <laughs> Super Bowl 2018. Okay, I'm not so interested anymore. God will be watching. <laughs> By Richard Meow. Richard Meow? <laughs> Richard Meow. <laughs> well, hasn't God watched all the football games? Oh, this... He this, picks the winners, right? Yeah. This gets good because he, what he thinks he's doing is a deep dive Ooh. into the discussion about whether or not God cares about football. Richard Meow? Richard Meow. What, what's his... <laughs> Richard... Oh, it is Mao. 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 Okay. Mao. Mao. M M O U W. Mao. Richard Mao. Okay. Mao. Twenty years ago this month, I had a public theological disagreement with Reggie Ooh. White of the Green Bay Packers. Reggie White was fairly religious too. Very. Yeah, he had a church. Very it religious. Burnt down. Super duper religious. Yeah. That guy. In addition to his significant role as defensive end for the Packers, who were soon to play in the Super Bowl, White was a Pentecostal preacher. Both of us, along with several, several other players and theologians, were interviewed for the Sports Illustrated cover story, Does God Care Who Wins the Super Bowl? Of course he does. Yeah. Several of my theologian friends took the negative position on this. One of them even doubted that God cared about the game at all and a couple others were wary of any suggestion that God had anything to do with deciding who wins. <laughs> well, if he created it, he knows who wins. Here's, here's the thing. Is there anything in the fucking Bible about the goddamn NFL? So how do you know what he thinks about it, right? It's like assuming that Harry Potter is real and that he enjoys split pea soup. But worse than that, there's another guy saying, no, -uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I know. Mm. God talks to me all the time. Right. So then what you say is, well, okay, we're disagreeing about this. Well, there's a part in the Deathly Hollows or whatever. That's a Harry Potter book, right? Sure. Sure. Okay. There's a part in there <laughs> where he says he likes split pea soup. So then it would be settled. But there isn't any of that in there, as far as I know. I don't care. Don't send me messages if there is, because <laughs> it doesn't matter for the point. But if it's not in the Harry Potter books, whether or not Harry Potter likes split pea soup, you can't just say that he does. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, yo, no, yeah, he does like that. Because then if someone says, N no, he doesn't, or prove it, you're fucked. Yeah. So they're arguing about fucking nothing. <laughs> my, my space Jesus can beat up yeah. your space Jesus. So back to the article. Uh, my friend and colleague, Louis Smeeties, these are awesome names, mm -hmm. once mused about the range of things God enjoys. A well-written poem. A Bach concerto. A courageous act of justice. Puppy dogs. I would add to the list an exciting football game. When a quarterback throws a long pass and a player down the field makes a spectacular catch. I imagine the Lord saying to himself, nicely done. This is one of the reasons I created the human race. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow. Really? Wow. You got some lofty goals, buddy. So I'll pause so he... for face palm time here. <laughs> he, so God has no saying what happens to it so he gets to watch it like he's actually watching it or does is he actually like the all-seeing omnipotent god who already knows what's going to happen can't be so then he would be bored with it yeah. if he was that way because exactly. he knows what the fuck's going to happen yeah, he wouldn't can't, have any he, way to enjoy he it can't enjoy an exciting game because it's impossible for it to be exciting because he, he knows, knows what's going exactly. to fucking happen. There's no suspense there. Yeah, it's no. Total, yeah. There's no risk of loss. There's no There's no threat of any. I mean, he knows. Because, he's, because it, for all intents and purposes, he's fucking doing it. By their own logic, he already wrote the game. Yeah, exactly. He wrote the script. Right. 
Uh, yeah. Reggie White was a strong supporter of the idea of an active divine role in determining the outcome. <laughs> what basis do the scholars have for thinking that God does not take sides? He asked. After all, he observed, God intervened in David's fight with Goliath. And then there was the clear case of divine intervention in Jesus's victory over death, which makes no fucking sense it's, at all. His victory <laughs> over death? There's divine intervention into God's dying? <laughs> Who's intervening? And for whom? And, on, and, and, and what is Jesus doing while all this is happening? <laughs> Probably fiddling with his penis. <laughs> he couldn't. He was nailed to a board, Ryan. Mm. Yeah, but after he got after he survived dying. Oh, that's the first thing he did after being crucified. Fuck yeah! With your hands <laughs> held up there for those days with those those holes in you. You're like, I gotta find out if this works. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the reporter who interviewed me told uh, told me Reggie had even observed uh, to him that God doesn't think much of losers. So now we've now we've that eliminated very Trumpian. I, I said it kind of Trump like. <laughs> so so now we've eliminated all knowing and all loving from this guy. Yes. Uh huh. Because mm -hmm. fuck the losers. Yeah. Losers. While I was not ready to endorse the idea that God actively determines who the winner will be, I did not accept the view of those of my theological colleagues who insisted that God stays rather aloof from what goes on in football games. I said, and I still see it this way, that God cares much about how the game is actually played. He can't. How it does he know no that? Sense. How does he fucking know that? He's he's making a knowledge claim. Tell me how you fucking know whether God gives a good goddamn about the fucking football game. Yeah, and and also, if you're per if you're a perfect, all powerful being who orchestrates this thing, and then and then. You already know how it's going to play out, and you're watching humans do do the thing. First of all, not exciting. Doesn't matter. You don't yeah. fucking care. Second of all, what if a mistake happens? Right? If it's anything less than perfect, it's yeah. fucked. It's the whole thing's fucked because but God you can't already make know a what the perfect game is. Hmm. And if they do anything less than that, it's not like oh, well, this is cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like w we get excited when something big happens because we didn't expect that. Yeah. If you already know the perf the perfect game and you're watching them fuck the whole thing up, how how cool? You know what I mean? Like how good is that going to be to watch? Like you're, this guy is just this is so fucking dumb. Well, maybe God would be excited if they fucked up his plan. Like, wow, they did it! They finally beat me! Holy shit! <laughs> wow! I didn't see that coming. Well, and did he ever like? Did did Reggie White ever complain when he would lose a game? Like, yeah, we came out and played our hearts out, but God just wasn't there for us. I mean, right? We've talked about it on the show. In before. fact, God hates me now because I'm a loser. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't think much of losers. He he might have for, for all we. I don't know. I guarantee he didn't. Hmm. Um, where was I? Right here, next to me. Yeah. And it is not simply about how the players treat each other as competitors. It's also about the physical prowess that is on display in a well-played game. Mm. The Packers lost to the Broncos in that 1998 Super Bowl. John Elway, the Denver quarterback, completed some excellent passes in the game. Well, a real thorough analysis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think God enjoyed watching those plays. Why? A lot of people tell me that it was a really good game, <laughs> that he, he threw him some amazing passes. I've yeah. heard a lot of people say that. Some of the best passes. <laughs> uh, and I don't think he was disappointed with Reggie White for being on the losing team. Hmm. Well, well why not? What? Yeah, well, that, doesn't that just directly contradict what Well, that's what earlier? Reggie said. This oh. is what the author is saying oh, okay. of Reggie. Because oh, okay. he's, he's disagreeing dead. with Reggie about the losers part. Hmm. Uh, what all of this reinforces for me is the need to acknowledge the creator's interest in how the game gets played while not being a special fan of one of them. God needs better hobbies. Yeah. Like the creator of the universe gives a flying fuck about each individual football game that is played throughout 
human I mean, history. I would figure God would be more into building train sets and building the communities around the train sets, like he's building little <laughs> worlds and stuff. I would think like he would be more concerned by. about making functioning governments that feed their fucking people. <laughs> Why? Keep crime rates down. You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe getting rid of the cancer he created. Yeah, uh, sure. Any of those things, but no, I sorry, I've got a football game to watch. Maybe he just doesn't, doesn't understand eating because he doesn't eat in heaven. You guys, I waited three and a half billion years, okay, for you guys to be able to play football, and now that you're finally able to do it, I'm going to watch the games. It's, yeah. it's great. Fuck the food. <laughs> Making football great again. Except for the, <laughs> except for the barbecued buffalo wild wings. <laughs> there, uh, we'll get plenty of those. Uh, once when I was on the editorial board of a small magazine of religious commentary, ah. someone submitted for our consideration a piece criticizing all aspects of the Super Bowl from a theological perspective. It was, the writer argued, an idolatrous event, reinforcing sexism, consumerism, super patriotism, and the celebration of violence. Mm -hmm. Our board debated at length whether to run the piece. A few of us found it a bit overwrought, but in the end, we did decide to publish it. After our meeting, I walked into the parking lot with one of my fellow editors. Are you okay with the decision to publish that article, I asked. Yeah, he responded. I guess the writer made a few good points that we ought to take seriously. He then added this. But if Dallas plays in the Super Bowl this year, I sure as heck hope they get beat. <laughs> I think of his commentary. I think of his comment every year at Super Bowl time because I try to keep a proper theological perspective on the event. Oh, oh he's the <laughs> he's the arbiter of what is a proper theological yeah, and, and, position. And, on and this. what is a theological perspective on fucking football because well theologians can't even agree on a theological concept yeah i'm not wondering which team god favors more than the other but since i'm not god i have i do have an interest in the outcome and even though my own favorite team is not playing this year i have some strong feelings about one of the teams wink wink that will be playing i sure as heck hope they get beat <laughs> but if their quarterback happens to throw a few completed passes, I will try to remind myself about what God enjoys. Watching football <laughs> and yeah. butt sex. Yeah, I'm sure Tom Brady might happen to throw a few completed passes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what a, what a fucking load of circle. Then why didn't God treat his boy Tim, Bo uh, Tim Tebow really well? Yeah. It's good. Well, he was a lefty, so. Yeah, but God fucked him over hard. He's a lefty. He's got no soul. Yeah, but he got down those knees, like, hardcore kneeling. Like, he started a fucking viral trend of taking a <laughs> Hardcore knee. kneeling. <laughs> and then he's going to start his own competitive kneeling. <laughs> he could have. He could have. He could have started his own pornographic hardcore kneeling. <laughs> I mean, it was rough. Uh-huh. Sure. It was. <sighs> yeah, Tebow sucked. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What, ha what happened? Yeah, it's interesting they don't bring that up. How bad Tebow sucked? Yeah, yeah when but, he was, but when he, he was, was so, the preachiest player on the yeah, field. Yeah, he was so overtly religious. And that's how everybody loved him. Like, oh, give Tebow a chance because he's so religious. It's like, no, he sucks. Right, and he can take a knee, knee on the field because he's white. Actually, I had my aunt yelled at me on Facebook one year when Tim Tebow was sucking it up, and I, like, he couldn't, because he sucked, and they, like, lost in the playoffs or some game, and I said, Where's God now, Tebow? My aunt's like, don't say that about him. I'm like, he says, he preaches to God all the fucking time. He's a shitty fucking quarterback. He goes, yeah, but he's a good guy and he's a very compassionate guy. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Where are they he's getting He's a horrible this from? fucking quarterback. And, and what are they using as evidence for that? That, that he's, he's a really good guy. That he prays. Yeah, because he mentions God. Yeah. It's the same fucking thing people do with Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, he mentions God. That means he's a really good guy. All right. It's that, and that's that same thing like, oh, I'm really surprised to hear that about so and so. I th he's a good Christian boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, those things are not synonyms. No. No, they're not at all. But it, like I said, it's the same argument that we hear about Donald Trump from fucking right wing Christians. And he's not religious, Donald Trump. No, ha has he attended church a single fucking time since taking office? Except for the time I think he went to church for uh, the national prayer breakfast, and that's all I can think of. He's golfing on Sundays yeah. most of the time. Yeah, he's that in Mar a Lago. He's in my church. He needs to fuck off if he's going to be. Yanking Jesus's chain the whole fucking time to whip up his base to keep him in office or protect him from all of us crazy liberals who think that it's terrible that he's talking to Russia and 
ha- you know, just allowing their influence and won't pass the sanctions that all the rest of Congress has already fucking passed. Mm-hmm. He needs to get out of my fucking church. <laughs> and Obama got got criticized for going to church because they didn't approve of the pastor he went to. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, it's because he was he was a black pastor, Ryan. I know. Well, it was Louis, it was Louis Farrakhan, right? No. No. He, oh, that was the pastor he went to earlier in his life. Maybe earlier in life, to. but while he was in office, the pastor that he would go to, like the oh, services okay. he would attend sometimes, people didn't agree with it. Yeah, he went to like an African-American community for church, and he was a black pastor. And he was, I guess he was kind of, I can't remember if he was like a little more very liberal, fringy type. I don't uh, know that he was uh, fringy, but he, he often spoke out about uh, racism yeah, and slavery yeah. and subjugation and with the Fox yeah, I, News and the rest He was one of those uppity American. blacks who he just a, wouldn't shut yeah. the fuck up about yeah. slavery. Yeah, why, why won't they just take their enslavement sitting down? <laughs> you know? They definitely can't take a knee for it. No. Well, they had to sit down mainly. I mean, the cargo holds were a little No, short, they had to lay so. down. <laughs> had to tow chains. Jesus, I'm uncomfortable with all of this. <laughs> it's pretty brutal seeing those photos and images of like, the way those slave ships operated. Mm-hmm. 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 Hey, this is Taylor Grin from GrinandBarrent.com, where we do news, analysis, and commentary. And you're listening to Godless Revolution. It's overall, honey. Now you can die of the whooping cough in peace. Yay! <coughs> Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. And so, my friends, this is the point of the show where we thank you all very much for listening. And we thank our Patreon supporters, and we thank our guest, and generally just say super duper things to you. Fucking, I don't even know. We, we bid you adieu. I don't know what I'm fucking talking about right now. do I. That's why we keep it in, because it's raw. It's real. We do it live, motherfuckers. I'm tired. I have fucking drove to Ogden at 5.30 in the fucking morning, five days out of the week this Holy week. Holy shit. And- you should see what it's like getting up at 4.30 in the morning and driving two hours to work. I didn't know that there was air outside at that time of day. <laughs> Until this week, like I knew that it had to be out there every Thursday at least, because that's yeah. when I typically yeah. go into the office. I didn't know it existed like all yeah. five days of the week. I thought surely there was some reason that I wasn't traveling there, and it turns out it's just because I don't fucking like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Earth doesn't create just a vacuum when you're not outside. Mm-hmm. But I do want to thank all of you for listening to to tonight's episode. I also want to thank Natalie Newell for coming on this evening. Yeah. She was a whole lot of fun to talk to. You guys should definitely go and check out the Science Moms documentary film. Uh, the other good one that I watched recently, and Natalie mentioned it mm-hmm. during the uh, interview, is Food Evolution. It's really fucking good, and it's narrated by Neil deGrasse Tyson. So Ooh. you get his sultry, dulcet tones yeah. telling you how wonderful science is and that you shouldn't be afraid of GMOs and telling you a little bit more about the technology behind it and... The evolution of our food supply chain that is pretty interesting. Yeah. I liked it very much. But it is time to say adieu. Before we do, I want to make sure that we do thank our Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, you can do so by going to Godless Revolution. No, that's not right. By going to patreon.com slash yes. Godless Revolution, where you can pledge as little as $1 per episode, and we would greatly appreciate it if you did. Uh, this week I I got some new microphone boom yeah. arm stands for the studio that look and operate very nicely, much better than the. They don't make noises. Than the shitty. <laughs> I'm moving it right now. You can't hear it move, can you? You, you can't would hear not know. And the old ones, you would have heard a whole bunch of like creaks, spring sounds, or like bong. Yeah, yeah. These are much nicer. I would like to get to a point where we can. Start taking the show on the road a little bit. Maybe go That'd and visit some, go and visit some other locations or go to atheist conferences and stuff and interview people there and do live shows from there and buy other stuff to do live shows and stuff like that there. That would be pretty fancy and fun. Uh, so if you like the show and would like to contribute, please go and do so. Maybe if we you, can come by toward your hometown. Yes. We would love to do that. We should kick off a. Take the show on the road campaign. That'd be fun. Go get a beer. Yeah, sit and have a beer with us. Chit chat for a little while. But I want to be sure that we thank Michelle Short, Christy Kalbach, 
Camille Baraski, New Mania, Alan Firth, Gatheist, Larry Wilson, Dr. Dan, Matt's boss from the 2SC podcast to whom we pledge loyalty, Janet Uter, Let Them Eat Kofefe, Stephen Andrus, Marius Kotbutrakowski, Rob Otto, Utah Outcasts, Tim Jacobson, Matt Tuller, Megan Kennedy, Andrew Vodapich, Brandy Hamrick, Jeremy Goodson, Angelica Pearson, Wes Aaron, Purple Dragon, and Taylor Grin. Thank you all very, very yes. much. You are all greatly appreciated. Mm-hmm. More than you know, honestly. I, there's no way that I can thank you enough for your generous contributions to the show. Yeah. And so until next week, crucify those football players. <laughs> <laughs> leave a review to get your vaccines and write the show five times a day towards Cy Mecca what Cy Mecca what oh that? Cy Mom oh okay I gotcha okay <laughs> I'm gonna just edit that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably good <laughs> just that whole section that's not your wine <laughs> like, like what? I said, did it taste like jalapeno grigio? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Originally said, I only listen to when you're on it, mm-hmm. as in me, because my mom doesn't like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be tough. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to edit that in. That would be terrible. <laughs>